Hello my friends, welcome to Painting with Harold, and tonight we're going to do a, just a fun little simple landscape, nothing real hard, well, that's probably a painting that anybody can do. The colors I'm going to be using tonight are titanium white, Prussian blue, lizard and crimson, mountain mix, dark sienna, Van Dyke brown, sap green, cat yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, and the evil bright red. Using a 16 by 20 inch canvas turned on landscape with a thin even coat of liquid white already on it. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down just a little bit of Prussian blue on my brush and I'm going to load it into the bristles. Just like we always do. We just want that even distribution of color in the brush. Not a lot. Just enough to come up here and get us kicked off. And make sure we a little darker in the corners, as always. That Prussian blue is a little bit darker than Thalo blue. It's a real pretty color. All right. we're, just, we're just gonna dance this brush around real loose. Because what we want to do is we want to make sure that we leave us some dark spots and some light spots up here in the sky. So we're not looking at a solid blue wall when we first glance at this canvas. We want to see a a sky with some distance in it and a little bit of movement in it. We don't want to see all these bristles that this brush is dropping, that's for sure. <clears throat> a good thing's happened over the past couple days. I've uh, I've had conversations with quite a few people out of uh, Facebook groups that have watched my videos and making new friends. And uh, some of them were inquiring about the uh, contest painting for the month, wanting to know the deadline. And uh, I added the deadline information actually in the video, but the deadline is June the 15th if you didn't already know to uh, get your submission to me your your version of the painting I did and that's exactly what it needs to be it needs to be your version you don't have to try and copy my version you do your own and uh, the winner will get fifty dollars again this month But I've, I've had some I've had some real good conversations with some with some guys this week, and it, it's been it's been kind of fun making new friends. There's a wealth of information in these groups if you just reach out and take advantage of it. I'll tell you that there's a lot of knowledge out there. So if you're having problems painting. <laughs> just about anything. I mean, you you can reach out to these guys and they'll they'll help you just out of the goodness of their heart. I mean, it's it's amazing how willing people are to share information with you that they either paid for or worked hard over the years to learn. It's 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 some good stuff out there. And if you're serious about art. I would suggest taking advantage of it. You know, talk to these guys and talk to them, ask them questions. Talk to me if you got questions, you know. I'm here to help. And they're here to help. They love sharing their work on Facebook. Some of them do videos, some of them don't. You know, it's it's just a I'm telling you, it's just all kind of information out there. And if you see something that 
that you see wrong in somebody's painting, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to be rude and tell them. You can send them a message and say, hey, uh, I was looking at your painting and I think it could be improved if you do this or if you do that. Because people need to hear the truth. You know, they, they don't know they're doing wrong if you don't tell them. Like in that last painting I just did. <laughs> Whoo wee. Didn't nobody have to tell me that. I did a tree at the end of that video that mm, that thing looked like something out of aliens. It was it was rough. But you know, <laughs> it happens from time to time. But I, I'll be the first to admit that tree was oh god, it was bad. It was it was terrible. I was not proud of it. I'm just glad it was at the end of the video because a lot of people don't stay to the end so they won't see it. <laughs> I don't give you the right to go and fast forward through a video just so you can see it now. I'm not proud of it so you ain't got to go look at it. Alright, I'm going to pick me up a fan brush. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go right through some titanium white. Load my fan brush up. And let's see. What kind of sky do we want today? I tell you what. Let's just do some. Uh, let's just do some loose type clouds today that that are just up here playing around, just having a good old time. Just doing whatever they want to do just basically doing cloud things and we'll just come up here and wiggle this brush just wiggle it around just like that now as you can tell if you can do that right there and I mean that was just anywhere and everywhere if you can do that right there you can paint clouds all you got to do after you make a shape like it is just come up here and just very lightly blend over these clouds or these these marks we made up here and just just lightly blend them in just like so and set them down into the paint and you knock some of that color out of your brush then you can always get your brush and load it up again You can come right back up here and you can go over some of them if you want. You can drop down and just whatever you want to do with this with this brush. You know, it's whatever you want to do, it, it's just that easy. Making clouds is not hard. And then just this time come up and just just kind of blend. Just blend some of the colors. Leave some bright white in places and light white in others. And then come through and just fluff this guy up like so. And just lightly blend through it. And just like that, you've got a somewhat of a playful little sky. Now if you wanna, you know, if you wanna get more technical with it than that, you can pick you up a one inch brush. Come in there and tap you on some paint. Don't take a lot. <clears throat> and you can come over here and just, you know, go down under some of these with your circles like you always do. And make you some uh make you some clouds with a little shape. And that's that's all preference. If that's you know, if you want to do your couple like that, feel free. But all that's gonna do is just add you a little more. A little more interest in your sky. That's all it's going to do. You can come on this side and you can do another one. You know, just just something to to put in your sky. That's all you're looking for. You know, just putting some cloud shapes up here. Just that simple. You can have a you can have a whole cloud. I mean, a whole sky full of clouds. Just that easy. 
just put them anywhere you want them. And it's quick, it's easy. I mean, it wasn't nothing to that. Wasn't no work in it at all. <clears throat> just that quick. Next, we'll pick up our big knife, and I'm gonna come right up here into my Mountain Mix color. I'm gonna pick me up just a little roll, and we'll determine where we want our mountain today, and how big we want our mountain today, and all that. So I'm going I'm to come over here and I'm going to go up and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to kind of just drop down and give myself some little bumps and bruises across here. Just some little, little cloud, I mean little mountain shapes. Just something to get some color up here. And remember, anytime you're doing mountains, you want to make sure you got a clean outside. You know, that's that's your first step, really, is getting you a, an outline done of it. Then you can come over here and add you a couple little, a couple little heels. And You got to determine, you know, how big you want your mountain to to be, and how wide you want your mountain to be. And I think what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna stop it right here, and I'm gonna reach over here and grab that two-inch brush I was using. And we'll come right up here and we'll lightly pull this color out just all the way across here like so. Just come in here and just pull this color out real, real easy like. Trying not to get outside my mountain. About like so. what we're looking to do. Just about like that right there. Got quite a bit of paint left right there. All right, we'll just come across here and kind of lightly blend that color out. <coughs> give it a give it a little bit of uh, mist at the bottom. It don't have to be a lot. All right, now I'm gonna pick up the knife again. All right, I'm probably messing the camera up here, but okay, here we go. Now I think it's yeah. All right, I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna grab my little white and pull it out. And we don't have to have a lot right now. Just get you a little small roll. And then I'm gonna come up here and start at this main tip this time. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna just like to come in here and pull this color down. It's real light. That's all you gotta do is just come in here and just real lightly pull it down. Just get you another little roll of paint if you run out. Come back up here and start again. Just, just pulling you down a little bit at a time and just let that paint break. 
Because if you're real easy with it, it it'll it'll break. It'll it'll just it'll do it for you. I mean, you, you don't even really have to <coughs> you don't even really have to work at it hard to get it to do it. It'll just it'll just break for you as long as you don't use a lot of pressure. Now, if you lose, you know, if you use a lot of pressure, it's going to want to smear and take on the look of a uh, kind of like you're caking the uh, ice in a cake or something. Or I mean, you you can tell it, it just it changes. The whole look changes. It just it will not look right. But the main thing is keeping that paint as flat as you can when you pull it out before you get that little roll. Because if that paint ain't flat, you're going you're gonna to pick up way too much paint. And if you got too much paint, it's way harder to control. You can come up here at this little, this little point and kind of pull some of that down a little bit. You don't have to pull down a lot, just a little. Kind of working the end up here, like so. Make it just look like <coughs> snow laying in here in places. That's all you gotta do. Then you can come up here and get you just a little bit of the Prussian blue. Mix into your white and get a little mountain mixture mix in. You'll pick you up a kind of a bluish gray color. You can use that. You can use that uh, little side of your knife. That little edge up there. You can grab a little bit of that color and come up here and just sneak in here and Go to pulling some of it down. Just in places. Leave your mountain kind of rugged looking. You know, that just uh <coughs> you don't you don't want your outside edge to be real smooth on every mountain you do. Let it let it have some bumps and bruises up there. Let it look rough. Because all this side is is really just your, it's just your shadow side. And in reality, you, you're not going to have a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of shadow over here. I mean, yeah, you'll have some. But you're not going. The whole mountain's just not going to be covered in the shadow. If anything, it's just it's a contrasting color, just really to to contrast the other side over there. But you just think if you had sun up here or light up here, and it was shining down, it's not just going to hit that one side. Some of it's going to hit over here. And that's, you know, that, that's when you get into pretty much preference as to where you want, where you want to sculpt your mountain, you know, if you want it to be, you just have to kind of come up here and, well, let me show you what I mean. We don't normally do this, but we'll, we'll do it on this mountain here. Mm. Let's say you take a little more of that white and you come up here. And uh, let's just say you put a little white right in here, just just for the sake of saying. And so you pull that white down like so. Okay. If you come back and get you a little bit more of that, that shadow color, and come in here behind it, and give that little spot its own shadow right there, See, it just it looks just like a whole new 
a whole new little peak right there. But the thing of it is, it's uh, it's still on the shadow side of this mountain here. So, but because you put that snow on that side, it just looks like it's lit up. But just like that, you can you can come up there and you can just sculpt you a whole new little deal right there in your in your existing mountain already. And it just, just like that, you can make it a part of it. And then, like I said, it just bring you, bring your shadow in, like so. <clears throat> you can pick up, <coughs> you can pick up a little of the white, and you can come in over here on this side, and you can kind of work it in in different places. You know, not everywhere, but, you know, just little places if you want to. And uh, you can give yourself some some whole new looks right over here, just by just by adding a little bit of that white, just just like that, you know. Not, and that's not much. That's not adding much at all. And you can pick up a little of the original the original color and come back in you know make it darker in places like right here you know you can make it lighter in places by coming back with some more white it's basically just whatever you want to do and you know how you want to lay how you want to sculpt your mountain out, it's uh, it's entirely up to you. How you want it to look. But you can sit here and you can play with a mountain for quite some time. And and you can you really can piddle one to death. I mean, really. You can sit there and and keep just doing little things to it till it just everything just seems to go away on it. But if you want to come in and add, you know, lighter spots and darker spots, that's entirely up to you as a as a painter. <clears throat> Cause like I said, it's it's purely preference. on this one we'll just come in here and add just a little white here and there it don't have to be much we'll just add a little color up here just uh, about like so and that's uh that's basically a mountain I mean, just like that. Then you pick you up a two inch brush, come up here and just kind of tap the bottom. Just real, real light, tap the bottom. Don't take a lot of pressure for this at all. Just come up here, just tap along the bottom. Now over here on this side, you're gonna be picking up a darker color. You're gonna be picking up that shadow color, so. I would recommend when you pick that shadow color up to get you a paper towel and knock that color off. That way you don't contaminate the white when you go back over here for this next step. Because <coughs> all you want to do is just come in here and real lightly pull that color up back up into your mountain. But you just want to be careful and go the same direction 
that your mountain comes down, that's the direction you want to go back up in. Just like so. And it just leaves your pretty little misty bottom there. Like your mountain's just sitting on a cloud. Just that easy. <clears throat> and, we'll, and what we'll do now is uh, we'll come back up here and we'll get us a little more to mountain mix and we'll pull it out. We'll get us another little roll. <clears throat> and we'll come from over here this time. Just like so. I'm going to put me a little peak right here. And I'm going to come in here and just kind of just kind of work me in a little little peak that I mean it don't have to be it don't have to be like a you know like a pyramid point on top of it. Just kind of just kind of work that point down to where it where it kind of like that where it's kind of rounded and you come up here and just pull out as much of this paint as you can then we'll come over here and we'll add another little another little indention right there So, <coughs> kind of just round it off right in here. Bring this over. Just kind of let that go to nowhere. And do the same over here. Then you can come over here and put your little dark color across here because I got a plan for that. Okay. Now I'm going to use a one inch brush this time. And we'll come right in here. And I want to come straight across this line right here. Right down through here, just like so. And I'm going to pull that all the way across, just like that. And I'll come up here and grab some of this color and pull it out, just like so. And over here, pull some of it out the same way. And just like before, come across the bottom and give yourself that little that little starting of mist right in here. Just like so. Alright, we'll hang on to that brush for a second. Then we'll grab up our knife again. Come up here and give us a little more white. Come down here, pull it out flat. Get that little roll of paint. Come up here. Let it break. Just like so. Come over here and start on this side. Let it break. Over here. Same thing up here. Just let it pull right off that knife. And just let that paint just ever so ever so lightly break. It's just that easy. Just like so. Nothing to it. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't say it like that. It just takes practice. I mean, really, that's all it is. 
once you guys get a hang of it, I'm telling you, you you'll be amazed at at how easy it really is. Because all it is is pressure. I mean, that's that's it. It's it's the amount of pressure you use. And I don't want to make it sound like I'm a pro because it took me a little while to to get used to the amount of pressure it took to do this. I struggled with it. I probably worried Nick hanging to death trying to get paint to break before I finally figured out. And I didn't figure it out until after a, after a while of doing it. I mean, it, and I still sometimes mess up to this day. Because getting that paint to break is, uh, well, first of all, you got to have the right paint. Now, that, that is... That is one of the things that's very important. It takes a thick paint to do it. You're not gonna come up here with uh, with just any old paint and just real creamy and you know not very thick. You're not gonna come up here with that and get it to do like a good thick paint does. And Bob's paint is, I mean, it's, it's thick. It, that white is, uh, sometimes when I'm doing, when I was doing classes or when I am still doing a class with somebody, I'll already have the paint out. And uh, we get to the part where it comes to using the white and they'll say, is, is my paint supposed to be this thick? <laughs> And I'll explain to him, yeah, the white is uh, the white is very thick. And then I'll you know kind of explain to him why it is. And I say, oh okay. Because a lot of people, you know, they they have the mindset, you know, when when you think of paint, you you think of uh, you think of house paint or acrylic paint. You know, being in a liquid form, you don't really think of a uh, paint being in a in a tube in a like a paste form. And then if you if you notice that it's real thick, well, that'll really mess with you, you know, because. You just you, you don't. You don't have that image of pain in your mind. You know, you, you really, you're not thinking of painting that way. All right, we'll come in here like so. All right, now, I got my shadow color into my white in a couple places up here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back up there and fix that right quick. All you gotta do is just come right back in here and just just pull it, pull it right back down over it. Just give yourself that that highlight spot over the over the dark spot there. All right, then right here, I'm gonna come right here and I'm just gonna tap on a little bit of white right in here, just like so, because. We're going to do something special over here in a minute. But for now, that's all I'm looking for. Okay. We're going to pick up that two-inch brush again. And just like we did a minute ago, we're going to come in here and just kind of lightly, very lightly, come across and tap the bottom up into the mountain a little bit. It don't take much. And the same over here. And just very lightly come back in here and pull this up in the same direction. And we want to give ourselves that, that little bit of mist at the bottom right there. All right, now, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do this with the two-inch brush. Uh, you don't have to. You can do it with a one-inch if you feel comfortable with a one-inch brush more. 
what I'm gonna do right here, all I'm gonna do is come in here at that black line and I'm gonna pull that black line straight up, just like this, all the way across. And I'm gonna put just a line of trees over there. See how it see how it made that line of trees? Then I'm gonna just come in here and just very lightly blend out the bottom. Just like so. And then I'm gonna come right here and I'm just gonna tap it in. Just like that. And then come back and just real lightly take out all these brush marks. And now we got we got just thousands of trees way off in the distance back there. So now with the same brush, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna pull out some of this mountain color. And I'm gonna come over here and put a little bit of Prussian blue in it. Not much, but just a little. <clears throat> and where this mist is right here, I'm gonna come down here just under it. And I'm gonna come across here and just put in a little, just put in a little, uh, kind of like a little heel side back here. Nothing real, nothing real fancy. I'm gonna grab just a little bit more dark. That's not quite as dark as I want it in places. I'm gonna come back up here. Do this again, and I just want to. I want to bring this across just like so. And then when I get over here on this mountain, I want it to kind of, I want it to kind of drop down over here, not like so. All the way off the canvas over here, not like that. <coughs> All right. Then I am going to knock out as much of this paint as I can on my paper towel. And keep in mind, this is a dark color, so you may have to pull it across this paper towel a couple times to get it to work for you. All right, I'm gonna come up here now, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just lightly come across here, and I'm gonna pull these up just as straight as I can. Don't let them lay over on you because if you do, it's gonna, it's just not gonna look right. Even where it starts coming down over here, continue pulling them straight up. Just don't let them lean over on you one way or the other. Because if you do it, just <laughs> they're gonna look like they caught up in a windstorm back here. And you can come across here under there and pull up some. And the more you pull up right here, the, the more it's going to look like you got. I mean, it's, it's just going to look like, like thousands of them. And if you pull that light color up into it, all that's going to do is just kind of mist them out some. That's all it'll do. Just like that. That just looks like just, I mean, it just looks like thousands of trees across here. Hundreds of thousands. <laughs> All right, we'll wash this brush now. <clears throat> now I'm going to pick up a number six fan brush. We can use the same one that we used in the clouds earlier, just to make sure it's clean and dry. You want it dry because if you you put a whole lot of thinner up there, you'll you'll run into problems when you come back to do your highlights. Now I'm gonna pick up some of that sap green. I'm gonna pick up a little Van Dyke brown. 
the dark sienna and a little mountain mix and I'm gonna mix them all right here on the brush just a good dark color is all I'm looking for and just load that brush up with paint <clears throat> alright we'll come right up here we'll start right here we'll give ourselves a little little line down and We'll put our first evergreen in right here. We'll bring him down to the to the bottom of this tree line right there. Then we'll come over here and just right outside of the mountain here. We'll add us in another one, maybe a little bit taller. And we'll just kind of put him in over here. Kind of beside this one. Give him a friend. <laughs> That's what Bob used to say. He'd say he's going to give him a friend. Yeah, well, just like that, he's got a friend. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and give both of these little guys a friend. We'll run him right off the canvas over here. Maybe he'll be a little taller. We'll just bring him in and let him all we're going to see is half of him. His other half is going to be off the canvas. But just like that. We'll bring them across here. I'm gonna leave that little gap in there. I'm I don't I'm not gonna fill that in. I normally would, but I'm not going to today. Alright. We got to start thinking about our lay of the land here. Tell you what we'll do. Tell you what we'll do. We're gonna come in here with this one inch brush. And I'm gonna pick up a little sap green and a little Van Dyke Brown and a little dark sienna. And we'll come right over here and tap them in. And just out of here, I wanna I wanna just start laying in some. I'm going to just start laying in some, uh, like a little grassy formation across here. Just kind of let it disappear in here. Kind of make that look like a, like a little hillside across here. I think that'll be pretty. Not like so. some of that color on back to make it look like it goes on back in here and then the more we when we tap out here the lighter that color is going to get and then when it gets light enough we'll, uh, we'll go back up here and just kind of let it disappear back in here into these trees kind of like so just let it fade out back here real lightly like that Fade out back in here. Like it's just coming out of nowhere. Go 
because we're going to fix that in a little bit. And then on this little tree right here, we'll just we'll just move him like he's sitting on the side of the hill too, just like so. Yeah, right like that. I think it's plenty fine. Yeah, I kind of like that. It just looks like a hillside there. All right, we'll come up here and get a little more color. And we'll come about right here. And we'll leave. About right like this. And all I'm doing is just tapping. Just tapping and lifting right back off. And once it gets lighter, we'll, we'll do the same thing up here. Come up here and just let it, just let it fade out back there. This might be quicker if I pick up a two-inch brush. I think it would. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna grab same colors. That's a uh, sap green, Van Dyke brown, and dark sienna. I'll just tap this two-inch brush into them. It's gonna get a little darker over here, but. We're going to highlight it anyway, so it won't really matter. All right, we'll just keep this, we'll keep this angle going for now. We may even come in here and just kind of come back over here and darken some of this area up. Just work some of this paint off the brush. I don't know what made me decide to turn this into a hill, but it just, it looked like the paint was calling for it, so I went with it. <laughs> I don't know where we're going to end up now, ladies and gentlemen. I really don't. This may turn out to be a video you guys don't see. <laughs> I don't know. Because when I sat down here, this was not my plan, I promise you. But it just looked to me like that that was just screaming for a big old hillside type area out here. I even made the color down to do uh <laughs> to do water. If I'd have known what I was gonna do this, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have took as much time with the putting the water in like I did. Well, maybe if it's going to reveal itself to to want to be a hillside, maybe it'll reveal itself as to what it wants on this hillside, too. Now, I do know we can bring some, we can bring some trees down in here, come up with some trees, 
you know, bring them up about so high just to where we can see the, still see the top of the heel and know it's still a heel, but we can put a little couple short ones back here just to make them look like they're peeking out back here. <coughs> May do that. That's kind of a neat effect. I've done it in a couple paintings in the past and it, it, it's pretty neat. I'm about like Bob now. You could have done this with a with a paint roller and it wouldn't have mattered. Other than putting texture in here. And good God, this has got to be boring to just sit here and watch somebody do this for 15 minutes straight. back there. Alright, about like so. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a brush cleaning session, so I'm going to pause the video. I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. Wasn't gone too long. <coughs> Alright, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up here now in this color we used to uh, do the uh, little fir trees, little evergreens. I'm gonna come back with a real small number three fan brush. It's real tiny, I got it loaded up. And I'm gonna come right up here and I wanna just, I wanna create a little, a little straight down line, about like so. And I just wanna I just want to loosely tap it and just make it look like the top of the evergreen back here sticking up on the back side of this little heel back here. Now that'll probably show up a little better when we come back to when we highlight the grass and highlight it and make it stand out and all that good stuff. But then to make him look like he's doing that, we're going to come right beside him here. And we're going to come in here with a little bit taller one. Just like so. And we're going to... We're going to bring it down on, on to the hillside. Just like this. Just like that. a little more color and we'll we'll come over here and we'll add this one a little bit taller make us a straight line and we'll just tap the top of him on just like we did that other one only difference is he's just a little bit bigger now he looks like he's sticking up from back there And we'll come right down here beside him and we'll just draw us another straight line. And we'll come up here and we'll make him a little bit bigger, just like so. Making these just like you make evergreens whenever you make them, just tapping from side to side. Just being sure to leave a little space in there. What about like so? <clears throat> All right. Then we'll give us a little more color. And 
think over here in this mist, we could come over here and add us a little bit taller one. Let him come down. Let him come down the hill a little ways. All right, them birds go acting too loud or getting too loud. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna stop the camera. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ask y'all to sit here and suffer through their racket. They've been pretty quiet all night, and now all of a sudden they wanna. They wanna go to clowning. Boy, have I messed up. I shouldn't have done these trees until after I highlighted that grass. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh boy. Hmm. Well, I guess now we're just gonna have to deal with it. Not a lot we can do. All right, we'll come up with one now and just bring him just over the mountain, just to look over the hillside just a little bit. Not much, just just a very little. I'm gonna let him be a, a short one. Just sitting out here about like so. He don't have to be real tall. We got all kind of trees out here. We got we got mamas and daddies and brothers and sisters. It's just a whole field full of trees. I just seen something, ladies and gentlemen. What if there was a little cabin sitting right here that was looking down into this valley with that as his, as his backdrop? Would that not be a beautiful place to live? All right, I gotta do it. <laughs> gotta do it. All right. I'm gonna take my paint eraser here and I want the roof of this cabin let's see we want the cabin all right I'll be right back all right I'm back they don't know if they want to be quiet or loud tonight but either way we got to we got a painting to do, so they're going to have to cooperate a little bit. All right, we'll come across here with my roof, my roof line, and we'll get it kind of, kind of straight, and bring down the bottom up side, like the back side, and then bring the front side down, about like so, and get the right angle here. this and then bring this side of the roof down at an angle like this and then come across not like that This side down. Can I drop this side down? Let this side come down the mountain. About like that. And then bring this side down. And let it come across here. Like so. Maybe a little further down than that. Maybe right here. Not like this. Alright, we'll see what this looks like when we get up here with some paint. <coughs> Go filling it in. I'm going to pick up my little knife. 
And we'll come right up here in some Van Dyke Brown. And we'll grab a little Van Dyke Brown. And I want that little roll of paint. And we'll come right here on the eave of my this side. And this side of the roof. And I want to pull this color straight down. And then I want to come in here on this side. And pull this color straight down. Not like so. Let's get these colors just straight across here as we can. Because we can always come back and work on our perspective right after we get it blocked in. But that's the key. We gotta get all these colors blocked in first. Not like that. here like so pull this side down just a little bit bring that edge out a little more back here All right, get that I'm gonna get this down a little bit right here And he's built up there on the hillside, pretty good. Alright, as far as the roof goes, we're not going to put enough snow in this. So as far as the roof goes, let's see if we uh, come in here with a little bit of dark sienna. And give us just a little bit of white. I mix in a little Prussian blue with that. Maybe a little more sienna. And just a tick of red. That'll give us a kind of a grayish lavender color. That ain't, that ain't what I'm going for. That is not what I'm going for. Alright, I'm going to put a little bit of crimson in there. See if I can bring it back around to the... Yeah, there we go. Now. Yeah. Alright, I added a little crimson to it and it brought it back around more to the... Kind of the lavender side. Which, the only reason I'm going with this color... Is here in a few minutes I can... Uh, I can come up here with some red and... use it as a highlight color. And it'll I think it'll look better than if I had a real dark color up here. This kind of carried it back to the brown side just a little bit. Alright. We'll just lay this little roof on here, bring it down, just like so, give us a straight line across here, about like that, then we can come up here and clean it up. like that. Alright. <coughs> now we're going to get us just a little bit 
of white and bring over here into this little bit of Van Dyke brown color right here. Just a little bit. Don't take much. I'm going to get just a little bit on the little edge of the knife here. And we'll come in here and put in me some color along the eave over here. Just a little bit. Bring it color up. Come back down the roof line over here. And then go to pulling it straight down. And just kind of let it let it stay dark in places. That is perfectly fine. It does not have to It does not have to get real light because I don't feel like there's going to be a whole lot of light hitting it. I know there'll be some, but I don't think it's going to be a whole lot. I really don't. All right, about like that. That's what we're going for. Just an old rustic cabin sitting out here. Then we'll come back up here and straighten up our eave now. Kind of pull it back in. Get it cleaned back up. Because that eave needs its needs a line across here to where it looks like it's dark underneath. Just like that, we'll pull it down. <coughs> All right, then we'll bring in just a little bit of dark sienna into this color, into that same color. And what we, what I've done was just Van Dyke brown and white. But I'm gonna bring in a little dark sienna and maybe just a tad bit more of the Van Dyke Brown just to get this color darker because the front of the cabin kind of needs to be it needs to be darker than the side over here so we'll come up here and we'll pull this color down just let it stay good and dark Just like so. And give it just a little bit. Of highlight here and there. But we mainly want it to be. Darker in color. So it looks like an old, old cabin sitting out there <clears throat> on the side of this mountain. <clears throat> now I'm going to pull me out a little roll of bright red and get just a little roll of paint on my knife. And I'm going to come up here and I just want to real lightly Tap on this red across here. Just real light. Follow that roof line down. And just very lightly tap it. I'm not, I'm just tapping the knife to it, letting it touch and lifting it right back off. And if it don't stick everywhere, I'm not forcing it to. That's the key. You don't want to come up here and try to force this red to stick. If you don't want to, move on. Find you, find you a little bit more color or find you another spot. Because if it's not coming off, it means that you either got too much paint in one spot, but you definitely don't want to add thinner to this red to get it to stick. 
it's too uh it's too risky. You may end up uh, getting too much thinner in it, <coughs> and then it wants to run down the sides of your your house. So I mean, it, it's not real important if you don't get red everywhere up here. As long as you can see it, that's that's really the main thing. Like that right there. That's that's fine. You don't need no more than that. All right, now I'm gonna come up here, and I'll pick up just a little bit of my mountain mix, very little, and I'm gonna come over here and run my knife blade through it. And I'm gonna just come up here and make the indication of some boards. You may not even see them. And if you don't, you can put just a little more paint on there. That's all I'm doing is just trying to get the, just a little indication of some boards across the front here. All right. And then with that little edge of the, the, uh, knife with that same color I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put him in a door so that mountain mix is a little bit darker than the Van Dyke Brown so it'll it'll kind of stand out for a door there in the front of his cabin <coughs> <coughs> And then I think for a window what we'll do is I'll just come up here and I'll take this and just scrape this paint out with this angled edge of this eraser. Just scrape a little paint out right there and a little bit right there. Then I'll come around on the back side and give him a window or on the side. Just scraping out a little spot for a window. Then I'll grab a small brush, just a, if you got a small brush laying around, basically any small brush, pick you up just a little bit of white, very little, it don't take much, and a very little bit of Prussian blue, and mix them colors together, and you're just basically looking for a light blue, that's all you're looking for. Then you can come right up here, and just light brush on some of this blue just lightly brush it on that's all you got to do and that just give the indication of a little bit of glass in the in the window just by adding that little bit of blue and I'll clean that up Put it back up. All right, now I'm gonna take my little knife, and this is the part I hate doing right here. All right, with a little bit of white, I'm gonna put just a little bit of white on my on the heel of my knife, right here on the heel, and I'm gonna come up here and try to outline this door. Well, I'll be that gun. I must be getting better at that. Wow, look at that, people. Y'all know how I struggle with this. I've, uh, look at her. Talk about look. Look at that. Huh. All right, then I'm going to come up here and get a little dark color. And I'm going to come right here at the corner. And I want to give myself a outline here. Just like so. I'll come over here. About like that. Alright. One of the things I'm going to attempt to do right here. You don't have to do this. It's entirely up to you. But I'm going to come back up here. And I'm going to pick up just a little roll of red. And I'm going to try to lay on just a hint of red down this. Down this uh, outside of the roof back here. Just to make it look like it's coming down. 
And just like that, I'm going to say we got us a little cabin built up here. We'll come back and do us a little small cabinectomy now. Kind of level him up. Work on that perspective some. And just like that, we got us a little cabin. I'll put a little, I'll put a little line through these windows. Cause sometimes you, sometimes you need that. Sometimes you don't, but sometimes you do. I'll go ahead and add it. Not like so. Ooh. All I really need to do is clean this top line here up. And quit piddling her before you before you go and mess it up. Because it don't look bad. Alright, I'll come in here and clean this line up just a little bit. About like so. I don't know if this side needs to be lighter or not. I'm scared to fool with it much more. I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to leave it alone. Alright. Just like that we got us a little cabin sitting on the hillside. So now I'm going to pick me up a two inch brush. No, I'm going to pick up a one inch brush first. I'm going to come up here and do a little bit of thinner. And I'm going to come over here and pull down just a little bit of this cad yellow. And I'm going to pick up a little sap green. Not much, just a little. Because we got a pretty dark color up here already. We're just going to load this brush up. And we'll test that color right here. Yeah, that's not bad at all. We'll bring it, bring it through here, just like so. Yeah, that's not a bad color at all. Maybe just a little bit more green, and not much though. All right, tap a little more on this one-inch brush, and I'll come right up here, and we'll just start. We'll just start working it around, going down this hill here, just like so. Man, I really should have, I really should have highlighted these trees before I, I mean this grass before I put these trees in here. It's not going to have that professional finish look to it. It's going to look like I'm trying too hard. I seen it, got all excited, and just left it. <laughs> uh, <whew. coughs> all right, I will grab a little small flat brush up here and see if I can make that work for me. Just to see if I can be careful enough not to mess nothing up. I'll come up here and I'll come across just like so just being careful not to not to touch that roof of that cabin with this green that would be ugly try to keep the same alright I didn't touch it enough that I can't fix it Yeah, I think I can take a little small brush and fix all that. And then come back in here with a little a little color. And I'll come around the front of the cabin while I'm here with this small brush. At least enough to get me out of 
out of the danger zone where I can come back and use a one inch. Cause I gotta do something back here now. All back here along this, this edge. Bringing it down. Well, I made life hard on myself here. So if y'all do this painting at home, y'all know what not to do. Don't, uh, don't put your trees and stuff in until you get your uh, grass highlighted. Maybe when you start looking at it from a distance, you'll never, never notice it. I still got to come in here and pull shadows down on these trees and the house, so maybe we can cover a bunch of it up with that. <coughs> I got to highlight the tree still, so maybe I can cover up some of this with highlights. I just want to get far enough away from everything that I can start back using a one inch or a two inch brush to make this process go a little quicker. Cause when we start doing all this grass, we're gonna add a few colors and try to make it look a little more attractive in here. Way back up here, it don't really matter if, the, if you don't have a lot of detail way back here in the back, because it's uh, far off. So detail is not really, 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 really just major important way back here yet. So we may be all right. I want this one to. I kind of need to redeem myself after last night. I'm telling you. Cause uh, man, I put a tree in that that paint last night that looked like I had never painted a painting in my life, and I was trying. <laughs> I probably shouldn't even tell y'all this, but I was trying to make grass, little blades of grass, and I don't know where my mind was, but it wasn't where it was supposed to be, and whew, I jacked it all up. It did not look nothing like it was supposed to. All right, now I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna start back tapping on some grass. Just real light taps, making it soft grass. The grass that I don't know the name of. <laughs> what did I say I was gonna call it? Fluffy grass? I think that's what it was. So I'm just making a little, making a little fluffy grass here. And I'll come in here every once in a while, pick up some yellow ochre, and maybe a little more sap green. We just mix all these colors right here on the brush. Let them, let them change. This is an easy process, but it is a boring process. Cause all you're doing, you're just sitting here continually tapping. And if at one point you forget about what you're doing, before you know it, you done, you done tapped in an area too long and got, got it real soft and it just don't match the rest of it. Then you gotta go back and try to add more paint on top of that. By the time it's all said and done, <laughs> you just, you've done stuff that, you know, just wasn't really necessary to do. Boy, that Indian yellow gave it a good color change right there, didn't it? Look at that. Wow. That's pretty. Right, we'll bring a little bit more green in over here. We're running out of green. I don't want it to get too yellow on us. I 
still want to have a little light green because this is actually looking like a almost like a spring to summer type atmosphere out here. I just didn't know when we started it was going to end up being a two hour video. So I may end up splitting it up into into threes and uh, kind of make them a little shorter. That way it don't everybody don't get bored. Because I know that I mean, I know watching a video this long has got to get boring. It's got to. I mean, it's hard for me to sit and watch a <coughs> watch a movie for a continuation of two or three hours at a time without losing interest. So I can about imagine sitting here watching somebody paint a picture. It's, it's got to get pretty boring. So when I go to edit with it, I'll just cut it up and make it part one, part two, however long it ends up being. I'll uh, try to split it up into <coughs> kind of equal, equal parts to save some time because if you think about it really and truly every painting you do it's, it's really just just like several paintings in one because uh, you know right here for instance we ended up we ended up painting that that sky and then I <laughs> I painted water at the time thinking you know we are going to do a little little lake scene and then uh, I turned out putting a putting a mountain in and then I come along and added another mountain so I mean we actually and then doing trees and then doing the, the land and the cabin and the grass we actually are doing several paintings here at one time so I'll try to make it work out because I don't really, I don't want to bore you guys. Oh, and one thing I need to mention, I'm at 406 subscribers away from the thousand for giving away that, uh, that Bob Ross set, master set of painting equipment. So we getting there. 404 is a whole lot closer than it was. We'll get there eventually. It's just until you get into that algorithm, you just your videos don't get seen, and you can't get subscribers if you're not getting seen. So it's it's you guys that are really building the channel. The ones that keep clicking on it and keep coming back and probably laughing at some of my stuff and learning off some of it and wondering what the crap was he thinking? Because <laughs> if you think that, I don't blame you. I think it sometimes myself. Get in here and get to get to painting sometimes and forget the camera's rolling and just just do whatever you want to do and it don't work like it. Alright. That is a grassy hillside, ladies and gentlemen. And it turned out way better than I thought it would. Alright, let's get this little brush, I mean this little knife now and bring some of this dark center down. And get some white over here in it. Mix it up. Give us a kind of a brown tan color going. Get that little roll of paint. And we'll come right here and put in a little indication of a trunk. 
and we need a filler out here, you need your trunk, and this one, that one don't need a trunk, and we'll put a little small one in that one, <coughs> and we'll add one to this one over here, just a little bit, and this one, and the big tall one, we'll give him a trunk, then I'm we'll going to go back and get that little, no, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the highlights today with a, with just a regular number three. Come here and get just a little bit of thinner, a little bit of this green. And I want these highlights to be, I don't want them to be real bright. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna darken this color down some with a little bit of brown. And I'm gonna load this brush up. Then I'll come out up here and just start lightly tapping on some color. Now I did add just a little bit of thinner so this paint would come off my brush easier. But not much. And then don't forget when you get down to the bottom, leave it dark. Because uh, I think what we're going to do is uh, come back in here with a couple little specks of grass that kind of look like a bush. We'll come out here and let's get this one good and dark. Get him highlighted in a couple places, about like that. That's the color I wanted this one to be. So I'll go back and add a little dark right here. Yeah, that looks better. Alright. We'll come over here and highlight this one now. Just give him a little, little color. Right through here. Like so. And we'll do this little one standing out here by itself. Don't let your highlight color disappear out here into your grass color. See like that's trying to do right there? Don't let that happen on you. If you have to, <coughs> come in here and get you some uh, get you some dark. Make that make it way darker. Don't let it don't let it disappear into this grass out here. Cause if you do it's it's not gonna look right. Alright. We'll touch the little bitty fellow back here just a little bit, just to let him be seen. He don't take much. Neither does his buddy back here. He don't take much. And we'll come over here on this one and same thing with these. Don't let the don't let the highlights disappear into the grass. If you have to stop them short of getting out to the dark, do that. But don't let them don't let them disappear into the into the highlight color. Because if they do, it's it's not going to look right. You won't be able to see the separation in it. Alright. I'll get just a little bit more here. Let's come over here on this one. This little fella. He don't take much. Not like so. Same with this one. Just like so. started picking up that brown and we don't need that there we go now about like that 
Okay, I can live with that. Then we'll come over here into this color that we put down as the roof earlier. That, and I'm gonna bring a little blue in it, Prussian blue. And we'll bring some mountain color in it. And I'm, it's gonna be a dark, dark green color. I'm gonna come right up here off this little tree. And I'm just gonna tap, just like we made the grass. I'm just gonna tap out from under the bottom of it and down like that a little bit. And I'll do it again here. Just tap down like that. Even under the little fella here, he, he gonna leave a little no shadow, not much. And we'll do the same with this one. Not like that. I'm gonna fix this one a little bit. I don't like that. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Alright. We'll probably have a little bit of shadow. Let's see if it's hitting the house right there. It'll probably cast a little shadow this way. Not like so, I would think. Maybe off that corner. About out to there, I don't think it'll be much. I still just ain't thrilled with this one. There we go. Now, that's better. Okay. These might even cast a little over the hill. I don't think it'll be much. But just in case they do, we'll, we'll go ahead and add some. And I don't think we need to come in there with no grass or no bushes or nothing under them now. <clears throat> I do think one thing that would look pretty good. Let me... Uh, take a lot. Just gonna put out a little bit of Van Dyke Brown here. And let's say at one time there was somebody living in this old place. We'll get us just a little roll. We'll come in here and We'll put the reminiscence of, just say an old, an old fence that used to run across here. Just a couple little fence posts that still, still standing, but barely. Let's say it come down the hill, like so. I like that. And then we'll give him another one that might have come through here, about like so. I like that. I'll bring that one down just a little bit. Just a, just a smidgen. Well, this paint is not wanting to, not wanting to pull very good at all. Which that's all right too. We'll make it work. All right then. just a little bit of that same color we'll come across here and we'll put the reminiscence of some old barbed wire on here and just 
Make it look like a couple strands of barbed wire on his old fence. I like that. Out of here, like it just, like it's just barely hanging now. Or I tell you what we'll do. Instead of just leaving it hanging like it, we'll we'll come and add one more, one more post over here, just like so. Just a raggedy post. One more. It ain't gonna hurt us. And we'll bring the barbed bar wire on across, like so. And just tie it into the fence. We'll even make it a four string fence if we need to. Just like that. Then I'll grab just a little bit of white, a little bit of this dark sienna color. Come up here and just, just kind of touch it on just here and there just kind of lightly pull it around just a little bit don't take much just, just pull it around like the sun's hitting it out here Pick up the little one inch brush again and I'll come right under it and I'll get some more of this color over here we use for shadow and come right off them poles with a little bit of a little bit of shadow right like it. And it just looked like old reminiscence of a old fence standing out here that used to be. Alright now I'm on I'm going to pick up my number six fan brush again. I'm going to come up here in my color, in my dark color. Get it good and dark. And I'll come right out here. Just like so, and I'll run us an evergreen completely off the off the canvas here. So we get another one over here, just a little bit taller, about right there where that shadow is on this one. I'm going to bring it all the way through. again come back into our dark sun and white give ourselves a little indication of the trunk again 
right through here like so maybe a little darker over here on this one since it's down the heel some oof about like so all right then I'll clean this fan brush up I think a good name for this paint right here is going to be Evergreen Valley when we finish it. Because it's uh, a lot of evergreens out here. But I guess with that mountain range back there, what could you really expect, you know? Alright, I'm going to come over here and get a little blue and bring it to my yellow now. Because I want a real, I want a bright, kind of a darker, I mean darker, not bright green color on these. I don't want these real just come up here and just barely highlight them. Just touch them real light. That way it'll look like them look like them needles. Clean up that, make that trunk darker in a couple places. Yeah, about like that. Yeah, there we go. All right, then we'll we'll jump over here to the other side. We'll grab a little yellow ochre and throw in there this time. Kind of. Give it a different flavor here. And we'll come over here and I like this side now. I'm just lightly tapping across here. Just lightly tapping. Working left to right. Left to right. That's all I'm doing. But I would say with the with the sun being behind these, they're not gonna pick up a whole lot of light. But we'll just uh, we'll add the we'll add the color to it just because we want it a darker green since the evergreens and. Pretty touch in a couple places just to cover that trunk up. But I'd say about like that's all we need. I tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit this one in a couple places too. Cause I ain't real crazy about that that color out there on the ends where it's meeting that grass. So alright. Alright, I don't know what y'all think, but I'm going to call it done. I'm going to pick up my script liner and come over here into this red. Get me a little paint on it. Come right here. Put my mark on it. And we ended up with a Big old mountain overlooking the valley right there, didn't we? I bet he's got quite the view too, looking out that looking out that window in the morning times, drinking him a cup of coffee, looking down into that valley. That's probably a creek running through there that just sounds so good. Just listening to it. Alright, let me pull that back. See if y'all can get a wider shot of it here. Turn it around toward the camera. That way you get a straight on shot of kind of what it looks like. About like that. Alright, hope y'all enjoyed this one ladies and gentlemen. And I want to say thank y'all for joining me. Uh, remember, I love y'all. And God loves you more. Y'all have a blessed night. Like, comment, and share. That's the name of the game. 
and see you next time on Painting with Her.